it was the beginning of the bikings. <laughs> Two groups of people pulling out guns and shooting. It's like Chicago in the 20s. Gun and knife battle at the Viking Tavern. Seven people dead, not one in jail. So it's Father's Day 1984. What happens? About two o'clock in the afternoon, there's a phone call. I was at my father's place, mother and father, Father's Day. Chief of staff said, um, I need you to go out to Milpera. Bikies wielding chains, knives, baseball bats and machetes inflicted dreadful injuries on their enemies. It was the beginning of the bikies. It gave a legend to to the bikey. Up until then they were just, you know, the free-spirited, dope-smoking, brawling bad boys, you know. But then this, this took them to another level. There was the Comichiro, and it had a leader called Jock Ross. And then there was another element within the club that split off, and they called themselves the Banditos. The Bandito guys wanted to move into maybe doing a little bit more drug dealing. Jock Ross was more of, again, just let's ride our motorbikes. He wasn't a, a major crimp. But there was the bravado between the two that you guys can't leave our club. And that's what started. And there was a couple of little shootouts. There was a, the odd drive-by going over to the new clubhouse. But nothing that would give any indication that it would explode into a full-blown war. Something had to be done. What message then were you hoping to send? The message was, Back off. I got there and it was just, there were still bikies everywhere. And this was hours after the shooting. One detective took me over to the area and he said, this is where the 15 year old was shot. And you could still see all the blood. There was blood everywhere, all in different patches. And as I said, no one had been arrested. These bikies were still just roaming around. Did they still have, because there were a lot of guns involved, obviously, did they still have their weapons on them? Well, yeah. Well, as far as I know, no one had been arrested, so they did have their guns. Had it been a bit later, it could have been a lot worse, because it was they, they turned up armed, both sets. But um, I think the common Chiro weren't expecting what they got. You know, I think you see those those iconic photos now of the Campbell brothers, guys lying over their brothers who are dead, bikies riding round and round and round, and um, the police really having no concept of what they were dealing with. And then there was the funerals. And I remember the police saying, we've just pulled over a car. The boot is full of um, shotguns and pistols. So they were arming themselves to continue the war. Bikies were not organized crime then. They were blokes that smoked a bit of pot, got in fights, did a little bit of petty crime. But the whole fight began when the banditos wanted to become major organized crime figures. On the 10th anniversary, We'd have decided to do a big spread. Where are they now? Seven people dead, not one in jail. Not one in jail. Wow. You know, the bikies and a lot of those guys, one guy committed suicide. One guy who was, who was a bandito, he turned state's evidence as well. He became a witness for the prosecution and went into witness protection. He's still in that to this day. He was able to give the information that really helped put these guys in jail, admittedly only for <laughs> five years at the most. But it's interesting that now, um, 40 odd years later, he's still in witness protection and still alive. Uh, Jock Ross, as we know, Jock Ross still out there and still can't kill him. Because he, <laughs> he, he, he took big shotgun yeah. blast. Uh, then he gets run over years later when he's still up and about. It's a chapter of Australian crime that hopefully never be repeated. We see you know, a shootout like that. That's just insanity. I remember it's like Chicago in, in the 20s to have just two groups of people pulling out guns and shooting in a crowded place out at each other. Um, it's pretty amazing and hopefully we don't see it again.